welcome to the CSR Journal. Today, we are joined by Mr. Rakesh Makar, Executive Vice President and Head, Business, Marketing and CSR from Philiton India Credit Company Limited, a leading non-banking finance company. Hello and welcome to the sir show, sir. Hi, Pooja. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Uh, sir, we would like to know about key focus areas yeah. that Philiton India has in terms of its CSR activities. For CSR, we have uh, four major activities uh, which are under health, mm -hmm. livelihood, environment, and uh, education. Under health, what we do is we have vision eye care centers, we have end to end eye care facilities like cataract surgeries, mm -hmm. we have midday meals, and we have mobile medical clinics. Under livelihood, we have Pashuvikas, we have uh, Jivika, which is aimed at equipping rural women with skills to develop their production capacity. Mm -hmm. We have Gurukul, which trains youth mm -hmm. on uh, improving their skills. Is that uh, a residential skill training? Yeah, that one is a residential. The Gurukul is a residential uh, program, which is for 45 days. Okay. And uh, apart from that, we under environment, we have uh, tree plantation drive, we do disaster relief camps, mm -hmm. we do Krishi Mitra, which is organic farming. Mm -hmm. And under education, we have English speaking, personality development, we also donate computers to some uh, colleges, schools. Okay. So those are kind of activities that we do today. Okay. Now, uh, talking about Pashu Vikas, yes. uh, which I believe is a cattle-oriented program. Yeah. So can you describe in details what exactly it is? See, what we do as a, as a uh, product, we finance uh, cattle mm -hmm. for farmers or for special help groups in rural India. Hmm. And uh, like we have uh, almost... Uh, 250 branches covering 48,000 villages okay. where uh, we provide funding to people mm -hmm. for buying cattle and uh, buffaloes. What we realize is that uh, the upkeep of cattle in terms of the health is not good. Okay. So we took this initiative that we will go and help the people with the uh, health care of these uh, cattle. And that's where why we s started setting up uh, Pashuvikas camps. Okay. Where we call veterinary doctors from uh, government institutions or private doctors who come and offer free medic medicine, checkup facilities. Otherwise, in normal course, the farmer has to travel some 20, 30, 40 kilometers to take his cattle to some place where the doctors are available. Okay. So th that's a big initiative which we are pushing. Okay. And uh, that is what has really helped us in giving it back to the society. One project, uh, as you said, Krishi Mitra, yes. is into organic farming. That's now, right. what is your motive uh, and role there? See, if you look at uh, organic farming, the objective is to push society towards more organic rather than, you know, uh, pesticides, Correct. farming or, you know, other, other measures that we Nutritional and healthy yes, meal. Yes, yes. So that's what we do. And uh, it is, it is uh, obviously, uh, in beginning it is a very painful process because the output that the farmer gets initially is not very high. Okay. But the price that he is able to command over a period of time with less uh, less pesticides is far higher. Okay. So that's what we are trying to educate uh, farmers and I think that's a big initiative. As so a society we also need to make sure that we don't eat uh, f f you know, f uh, stuff which is full of pesticides or any kind Correct. of chemicals. So uh, do you help them marketing uh, those uh, products? I, mean, I think it's not difficult for them to market it. Hmm. Uh, we help them in, uh, uh, in uh, producing it. Okay. So we educate them as to how they can do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How has been the rural response? You know, when you initially go and say that, uh, yes, I'm a company, but I need to help you. I want to help you. So how is that they react to it? See, for us, uh, the experience has not been uh, all that bad because uh, okay. what happens is that uh, we are already there in those villages. Correct. Uh, like uh, when you go to the village, we go and meet uh, all the key personnel in that village. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we are already helping them by providing them loans and facilities Correct. that we provide, they really like it. Okay. So uh, when we do something for the society, uh, uh, like I have traveled to a lot of these occasions where we do uh, Pashuvikas uh, camps. Right. Even the sarpanch of the village would come and encourage us and say, thank you very much for what you're doing and it's uh -huh. really helpful what you're doing and people really appreciate that. Okay. So, uh, so far it has been a great experience. In fact, uh, people just love it, uh, the, uh, what we are doing. Plus, a lot of people realize that, uh, you know, earlier what used to happen, the, uh, uh, the owner of cattle, if uh, he was not able to milk it, okay. he just let it go away after, you know, trying it for a um, couple of uh, months. Right. But now he realized that there is a treatment which is possible. 
okay. and uh, he can get a get the cattle treated right. and uh, continue with his earnings. So okay. that that is something which we really experience over a period. So of time. so you get into the treatment for cattle? Yes, we do. Yeah, okay. we do that. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. as you said about you visiting these villages. Yes. yes. Uh, how much time are you able to spare you know personally to get into these social activities like uh, to tell you uh, the truth we have done uh, i think four or five i care camps okay i gone to every camp to inaugurate really it. that's nice uh, we do pashuvikas i go every uh, every year uh, that's something which we do every year twice or thrice a month uh, i travel to uh, our rural branches okay. and uh, every time i'll go and uh, there's some csr activity that we are doing and uh, there are simple things that we do like teaching people how to stitch clothes uh, and uh, we fund them a sewing machine okay now once we teach them how to stitch clothes and this woman who is at home has a sewing machine she is able to uh, do it as per her uh, luxury on time correct and if she is able to uh, make two or three trousers or two or three shirts or whatever right she makes 100 200 rupees a day right so that's how th we are uh, fairly yeah yes. correct now um for any company it yeah. is essential to of course make money and profits that's right. right that's right but then how do you ensure that you make uh, profits along with sustainable and responsible business i think uh, if you if you follow ethically uh, whatever you're doing in terms of your business i think profits come and it's always good to give it back to the society uh tell me what is the role of employees uh, you know yeah. in these csr activities are they keenly involved we have uh i don't want to call it as a kind of mission but every branch has to do one csr activity every month okay in rural uh, branches that we have across india and it's important that the employees get involved okay now why employees get involved is because they are already interacting with people in the village they are a familiar face for the right. village and when they go and promote some activity hmm. they are able to get more support uh, whether from the panchayat of the village or from uh, local uh, people in the village mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. end of it they relate you, better yeah they relate better plus If, when you're setting up uh, you know a tent for people to come and sit we are uh, bringing doctors they they really respect them and they really come forward uh, to help us set up those tents or set up those oh. uh, stalls and you know they see that there's a benefit for them yeah so that's why we uh, encourage our employees to participate like uh, uh, just to give you an example the pashuvikas day that we do across uh, india uh, once a year this time we had almost 2400 employees uh, participating in that okay and uh, we treated uh, 40000 cattle on that day okay i think what you're saying is also giving me an idea like connecting to people will also yeah. uh, you know end up connect, uh, giving you more business i mean yeah. that yes can also be a positive, positive yeah, way yeah, of positive looking at business yeah. uh, what do you think uh, you know how much importance or how yeah. much is the effect yeah. of csr on building reputation for any company i think if it is done in a fashion where you're really going out and doing it uh, with your full heart and soul in it i think it is huge importance but if you're just doing it like you'll go and just set up something and then forget about it because you have to do it i think that doesn't impact right so we strongly feel that you know people involvement and like i told you our employees get involved in csr activity that's very very critical correct and that's where it really makes an impact so but then we already have a mandate in place that's right right <coughs> now which anyways you know compels corporates to yeah. put a certain amount aside yeah uh, but uh, do you think we uh, there is no uh, so you know currently we don't have any rule which will penalize you or punish you if you don't spend yeah. that that's right yeah. the amount yeah yeah do you think we need any law yeah. which would you know look after the punishment part or do you think there could be any other way out i think uh, corporates are really socially responsible so i yeah. i i don't think we really need to penalize <laughs> them or something like that because uh, if you look at uh, some of the large institutions which have been in this country and uh, i'm talking historical days like tatas and villas look at what all they have done in right. this country right and look at us uh, like fullerton has been doing it like uh, last 5 6 years so even before you know it became mandatory Correct. so i think 
you really don't need to penalize people if they want <laughs> to do it they should do it with the heart and soul that's uh, what i always feel no now just connecting this one to the previous question yeah. uh, which said about the reputation part yes uh, you know while speaking to many people i came across answer that you know you can just have name and shame uh, yeah. you know policy instead of penalizing anyone yeah yeah, yeah. so we do have a mandate and people are doing it yes, and right. there are certain who are not i mean of course it was the first year and yeah, yeah, uh, it's a learning right. phase yeah do you think the name and shame policy would also work in terms of reputation in terms of you know uh, motivating them or pushing them <laughs> towards uh, I, implementing I, I, it i i really uh, doubt that uh, you know you really want to uh, whip people and tell them to go and do csr like if you look at it, uh, people take uh, borrow money from banks like uh, they are cor large corporates and they don't return it <laughs> right so uh, does name and shame uh, make them pay back the money i, I, I think the answer is no <laughs> okay. so i think the same logic applies here also okay yeah. you know there's one thing about uh, differential tax treatment yeah uh, now companies act lays down schedule 7 which gives you a list of activities which will That's be right. considered as csr activities right right now those activities are also linked to income tax act that's right and income tax act of course gives different tax treatments to you know activities yeah, yeah. separately now do you think this differential tax treatment yeah. would any way affect a corporate in terms of picking up a social activity like there's something like you know pm national relief fund yeah Uh, which gives you 100% uh, tax relaxation right, and yeah. something else would not give something would give you as much as 175% tax relief yeah, yeah. so do you think this exemption mm -hmm. could you know affect a corporate in terms of picking up a social uh, project not on the basis of the need but on yeah. the basis of tax i think uh, people should not be tearing their hair on saying that you know why i'm doing this and why i'm not doing this if they see they can really help the society they can give it to the society I think it should be done. No, like, the, but then there are uh, government schemes, yeah. you know, wherein a Absolutely, corporate yeah, can yeah. simply just say yeah. put in two yeah, percent and yeah. is just out of the accountability or, you know, it's yeah. basically I have done my job and right, uh, right. but then probably a lot more could be done. I mean, of course, it's Absolutely. all upon difference of opinions. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, but then, do you think uh, this kind of easy uh, thing, like what you are doing, is yeah. uh, you are? having uh, involvement of your own employees yourself right. like yeah. you have that yeah. but then with government schemes what happens is you know it's uh, easy, yeah. e easy 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 thing exactly yeah. so do you think that kind of activities can also not be very motivating uh, for the social change part of us see i think uh, where uh, you know the uh, where uh, the payment to government institutions for under certain donation or anything is concerned I think for organization which are very few people like uh, you you can have organization which have some 3 4 people but like in terms of money correct so i you know those guys can't do much uh, you know, right. those 3 or 4 guys uh, you know even if they do uh, go out and try to spend the money which they are making as profit it will be very difficult difficult so i think it's good that they can uh, donate it to the government and because obviously there are a lot That's of government institution which take care of that correct tell us what does csr mean to you I think CSA means giving it back to society. Mhm. Mm and we belong to this society. If the society prospers grows, we also grow and prosper. Correct. So that's how I look at it. Okay. It is it was really nice talking to you sir. Thank you so much for joining us at the CSA. Thank journal. you. Thank you. Thanks.